This is KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar, working for you. And this is Saturday, September the 7th, and you have indeed entered Overtime, where we get business done. And we are excited tonight to welcome aboard Hollister Whitney Elevator Company as our new title sponsor for this show. A tip of the cap to those fine folks for supporting our community, our young people, and all involved. So let's get immediately to work here tonight, because this was an utterly insane schedule. We'll start you off at Augusta. Championship pool action from the Lady Suns Classic, Southeast. Eastern has already beaten Illini West. If they can take out Rushville Industry, the Suns are your champs. You know how Tim Kerr's team roars, rolls, I should say. They want to get things done right off the bat. It's Tegan Rigg with the score. Then Amanda Stevens time up to get down, throws down the massive spike. It's two to nothing in favor of Southeastern. That lead is about to grow. Kenzie Griswold with the nifty spike, and it's an 8-2 Lady Suns lead. Here comes Rushville, though. Not going to go without a fight. Charlie Gerleman right here serving up the aceage. Rushfield down by just four. And then it's Italy Ford. She's not just for softball anymore, serving up an ace of her own at this point. But Southeastern set to pull away in set number one. Amanda Stevens, who would be your tournament MVP, doing the spike thing to extend her team to a 10-point lead. Nice to see her with the bounce back right there and this one is going to sail out for the set winning point right here from Miss Stevens making it 25 to 11 or not for Miss Stevens from Rushville 25 11 in set number one set number two highlights now Amanda Stevens setting things off with another spike to make it eight to six Southeastern how about Avery Esther with the perfectly placed point right here for Rushville Industry, they trail by just two, and then Devin Vogler, who had herself a massive tournament here, keeping this thing close with more great play of her own right there. But Southeastern's gonna go on a run down the stretch. It would be spike time from Kara Stevens, making it a 2014 lead right here. Little sis getting it done. Then more from Miss Kara Stevens as she's going to go up, rise, and put down another one. Southeastern now at 24 points, match point, championship point as you were for them. And Kara Stevens on the serve to cap at 25-18 in set number two. Southeastern sweeps its way to the tournament title with a big time win as you see. And again, Amanda Stevens was your tournament MVP, which meant the earlier match in the night between Illini West and Rushville Industry would be for second place in this pool. Illini West looking to win their last game. The spike right here by Audra Carroll for the first point is effective and away we go with the Chargers. How about Reagan Reed? She had a big tournament as well, extending her team to a 12 to four lead. Caitlin Fleck is going to score one here for Rushville to cut the deficit down to seven at this point as she takes advantage of the overplay right there. But Alina West is going to win set number one. Here we go for more fun. You see Miss Carroll with a block to get them there. 25-17 was the score in the first one. Set number two, all Illini West all the time. The spike for Miss Carroll is nifty right there. How about some defense as well? A little blockage action coming up right here from Anna Jacob. Oh, good stuff from her right there. Made it 9-4. Devin Vogler trying to get the Lady Rockets reignited in this one. She tries to bring Rushville Industry back, but to no avail. Illini West is going to spike it and win it with Reagan Reed to take second place in the championship bracket. Rushville Industry, which had a nice tournament, finishes in third. By the way, here's a look at all of your pool winners. So remember, Southeastern takes first place. Fourth place effectively goes to Camp Point Central, which had a very nice early week before the upset loss to Illini West. Your silver bracket winner in seventh place, Payson Seymour, and winning the bronze bracket this year, Bigsville West Central with a nifty showing as well. Big day for Quincy Notre Dame, testing itself against elite competition against both Sacred Heart Griffin and Bloomington Central Catholic in Bloomington today. First set win for Quincy Notre Dame. Two set win, I should say, over SHG, 25 10, 25 21. And then for the first time this season, the Lady Raiders taste defeat at the hands of BCC. They lose this one 30 28, 19 25, 13 25 in the offing. All right, Monroe City Softball Tournament Day, and those squad would open up in this one with Knox County. Melissa Chin's team tried to bounce back from an ugly loss earlier in the week to Macon. Audrey Youngblood in the circle and twirling early on, and then she's going to help her own cause. First two runs in this game were scored kind of on airs. This is a clean run and it's a good one as Miss Audrey Youngblood pokes this one to the deepest recesses of the ballpark. That's going to play to run and make it three to 
one. We're not done, not by a long shot in this one. Kinley Thimler going to step up and do some work with the bat as well. Nifty piece of hitting for her as she gets the chopper to go out into short left field, makes it a four to one lead. More fun to come, courtesy of Audrey Youngblood and her furious bat. Man, can she snap on a ball. A little torque right here. Inside the line, that starts things back up with a double down the left field line. Brady Keller, all she does, this week at least, drive in RBIs, hitting out of that two hole. We saw it against Macon. We see it again here. And that would just kind of get things rolling again for Monroe City. How about Kylie Cobble coming up right here with a chip shot to left? That's going to score another run. And Monroe City was kind of in feast mode. Eating frenzy, if you will. Naren Hayes about to do her thing. She can swing a great bat out of the four hole. You see it right there, doing what she needs to do from that position, driving in runs at that point. We're not done. Brady Keller stepping up yet again from the left side of the plate, driving in more runs. Then it was Naren Hayes as well. A 13 run output in the first game of the day for Monroe City as they end up beating Knox County. 13 to 3 was your final there. Across the diamond later in the day, really interesting, entertaining first round game between Clark County and Canton. Top of the first in this one, it's Sydney Binsbacher right here, starting things off on the right foot for the Lady Indians with the infield single. She's going to leg that out, beat the throw to first, and a run's going to come home. And Clark County was just getting started in the top of the first. Isabella Irvin stepping up to the plate, hitting one through third base. That's going to sneak in for a seeing eye single, extend the lead at that point to three to nothing. But we're not done with the Lady Indians. Maggie Wheeler with a clutch piece of hitting with two strikes goes right back inside the third base bag. It's five. Five to nothing, Clark County at the end of the top of the first. But here comes Canton at the beginning of the bottom of the first. It's Allie Ruffcorn leading the game off with a long triple. Not a lot of sexy runs in this first inning for Canton, but they just kept finding ways to plate runs to get back into this thing. Allie Ruffcorn with a little five hole shot through third base to score a run. Then it's Katie Guilfoyle. She's going to plate a run as well. Uh, as I should say, it was Kitty Guilfoyle and then just more runs coming home to score. Canton ends up winning this thing in uh, extra innings by the final count of 7-6. to six. Let's go to the scoreboard in this one, show you what happened the rest of the day today at the Monroe City Tournament. In the semifinals, Canton ends up beating Monroe City 7-1. to one. Would you be your final in that contest? It would be Monroe City falling into the third place game. They lose to Brookfield in that one to settle for fourth place on the day. Championship side of things, that's the Canton Lady Tigers. They get the job done today to get there, but they cannot beat a good Montgomery County team losing that championship matchup by the final count in this one of 6-2. to two. Also need to shout out the South Shelby Lady Birds, who were your consolation champs in this event. Also today in softball, Highland playing a couple of really good opponents this weekend down at the Francis House Central Classic. Yesterday, Highland, as good as they were and as good as they are, went 0-2 on the day. Bounce back day for the Lady Cougars in their game against Lutheran St. Charles. Have a day, Bailey Chris, two home runs, six RBIs to lead her team to victory in that one. And then Highland also beats a good Ellsbury team 9-7 to today to get the job done in that contest as well. Kiki Rothweiler with a triple and an RBI in that one as Kira Rothweiler powers her team to victory as well. Also, let's pass along some more scores for you today on the ladies' side of things. Actually, on the ladies' and men's side, we've got some cross country to talk about and some tennis. First, on the ladies' side, Quincy Notre Dame with a seventh place showing at the loaded SHG Central Illinois Invitational in Springfield. Seventh place is good. The big showing today for Q&D. Number three doubles team of Chloe and Kennedy Shrek doing the job, getting it done. They finished second there. Alyssa Lee among three fifth place finishers today for the Lady Raiders in that competition. Alyssa Lee doing it at number one single, so that's super impressive as well. And I need to talk a little cross country for you. Now we'll get to that in just a bit. We'll come up with more fun. Yeah, let's do the cross country now. Quincy Notre Dame Girls Day over in Canton, finished second as a team. Elsie Waters sets a new freshman record for fastest time at 20.01 seconds to finish second place individually. q &E boys today, led by Joe Warning, get a third place finish there. Joe was fifth in the competition. And we are just getting warmed up here on the big overtime show. Up next, why it's a good day to be a kill day. You're watching KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar, working for you.
And welcome back to Overtime Home Debut for new Quincy University coach Jason Kilday today, taking on the Lincoln Blue Tigers. First play from scrimmage, an attempted flea flicker. Are you kidding me from Lincoln University? That ball, Quincy University had a number of chances to jump on it. It ends up being a safety to start the game. 2-0 Quincy University. Next offensive drive, Drake Davis going to work. How about this? This is Isaac Drew on the back end of this. Nifty stiff arm to make this work. And he is going to lead QU down the field to a field goal. It's 5-0 in favor of the Hawks. How about that Hawk defense, which was stout today and is always led by the incredible Brock Inman. He's going to force a punt with his nifty work right here. Good stuff from him. Next time on offense for Lincoln, they would be, be stuffed. Check out the sequence on third and goal at the one. They would end up going for a field goal. No good, but there was an offsides on QU after that point. So, you know what? Lincoln University is going to go back on the field, try it again after this, and try to score the, the six points. But again, the Quincy University defense shows its worth and its character and stops them right there. How about some fun from the offense right now? Kareem Carswell going to work for Coach Kilday's crew right here. And this long nifty run is going to get some things going, but we're not done. How about catch and run time from Anik McKenzie, who's going to get the job done in this one as the offense starts to get a little fuel to it. More to come right here. Nifty pass right there. How about some Mr. Carswell yet again as he's almost going to score, getting this ball eventually down inside the five-yard line, which would set up Teon Dollar to punch the ticket for the Hawks with their first touchdown of the season and at home for the regular season as well, obviously by extension, as Teon Dollar is going to cap a 99-yard drive, and uh, Quincy University is never going to look back at this game. Great win for Coach Kilday. Win number one as a head coach in his career. 46-5 to is your final. I wish I had better news on some other fronts. I tell you what, tough day for Truman State as they make their debut post Greg Nesbitt and end up falling to Finley today. 37-21 is your final there. The only good news elsewhere in college football is that Illinois College is the deal. Went over to Decatur today and man, did Destin Chance twirl the ball a bit. Seven passing touchdowns for that man. I tell you what, Illinois College's passing game is just insane. They win this one. 46 to 21 to open their season in style. I did shoot some Culver Stockton highlights, got off to a great first drive and missed a 27 yard field goal after marching the ball down the field. Man, it was not pretty from there on out. They lose to Mid America Nazarene in this one. 69 to 7 was your final as Culver Stockton struggles and struggles mightily on that front. High school football now. Eight man fun today. Bushnell Prairie City undefeated after the win last week, taking on the West Central Heat. How about this eight-man action down 14 to 6. The defense going to step up for the Spartans in this one. It's Ethan Pierce with a stop on third and seven. Good stuff for him. It's now fourth and seven. Lane Huffman going to come up with a critical stop, and BPC gets the ball back and a chance to try to attack, and they would do that right off the bat with this guy, Lane Huffman. This is a run of beauty, but unfortunately, at the back end of this, there was a block in the back that negated and nullified all of it. Look at that man's speed and his moves. Unfortunately, we don't get to give you the Lane Huffman highlight, but we do get to come back and go to work with a nifty drive for the Spartans, starting with the quarterback, Taylor Love, going to take this ball down, pick up the first down, and then it's Brock Beekman doing work right here. Going to slip inside the Heat defense, and he is going to pick up massive yardage in this one. And if it works the first time, just keep feeding Beekman. Here's the touchdown to help tie this game up, or at least get it to within two at 14 to 12. Mr. Beekman is also going to add the instant two-point conversion to that to tie us up at 14. But right after that, on the ensuing kickoff, for the second time in the first half, the Heat would take the kickoff all the way back. And that was really the breaking point today for the Spartans as they end up losing this contest down the stretch. 38 to 26 was your final in this one in favor of the Heat. Also, just up the road at West Prairie Southeastern, tough contest for John McCormick's crew facing a really good Amboy squad. The Cyclones tried to set the tone early defensively on the first half. That's Aiden Horn with a nifty tackle. But the Clippers hit on their first of two possessions for touchdowns. How about this? Eddie Jones to Caleb Jonas coming wide open and free, and he's going to streak to the end zone to make it 14 to nothing. Third and long for the Cyclones though kind of a really good grace moment for them it's cam kramer right here taking the third and long simple 
quarterback keeper right up the middle and going 80 yards with it. Unfortunately, that would be as close as this gets. Amboy wins today. 58 to 14 was your final, which begs the question. Hey, we had a lot of shakeups. We had a lot of interesting action. How is doerism going to look this week in terms of our power poll and our ranking of high school football teams? Remember Camp Point Central with a loss this week? I'll give you a sneak peek at the top six as it is currently constructed. And I'm not sure right now that Bowling Green might not be the best team in our area after the way they've started. But Quincy High School has taken care of business and beaten a really good opponent in Q&D in the offing. So this is the way it will shape up when Doerisms drops, at least for the top six. You'll have to tune in to KHQA.com and read the rest of my column a little later this week to see how the entire food chain shakes out for high school football. Speaking of high school football, didn't get a chance to show you North Shelby last night. Bouncing back from that big week one loss to Bishop LeBlanc, taking on Sweet Springs last night. It all starts on fourth down for the Raiders. Some suffocating defense on the Greyhounds, recording the turnover on downs right here to end the first quarter. And then on offense, Cole Browning time. He's going to take the pitch, find the scene, the seam, I should say, and give North Shelby the lead. North Shelby led by eight at the end of the first. They're not done working. First play of the second quarter, it is Jay Daniel doing what he does, keeping it for himself and powering his way to six more. And then check out this two-point conversion, which is play of the week worthy as well, because Jay Daniel was trying Trapped about three different times, should have been sacked, but he is so resourceful. This is why he's an All-Stater, getting away from everything and everybody and making it all stand up in the end as North Shelby pulls off the victory last night. Big time in this one, North Shelby, the Raiders, put 73 points on the board, looked much more themselves, or 70, I should say, winning 70-16. to 16. Some soccer scores to pass along in the day. Great win for Quincy Notre Dame today against a Lincoln squad that was simply overmatched. Elliot Hendry and Sully Walker, each with a pair of goals in that victory. QD seems to be better on Saturdays than any other day of the week. So maybe Greg Reese should petition to play all his games on Saturdays. Also today, Columbia Rockbridge, way too much for Quincy High, winning 5 to nil. Jacksonville with a big win over North Mac today. Final count in that one was 9 to nothing. And we have got all of your college days action, including spikes from Western Hall when overtime continues. You're watching KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar, working for you. The last of three weekend matches for Western Illinois Volleyball at home, taking on the Flames of UIC. And you know what? This is your setter, Maggie Craker, giving you added value. She's up at the net contesting and beating the middle hitter for that. Good stuff for her. Yeah, that's value added indeed. How about Grace Kramer right here, serving up the ace through not one, but two Flames back liners. That's a heck of a service point right there. And from that point forward, how about we throw it into Kiana Cruz time. She is so darn good, and she can do just about everything, can play almost every rotation, and man, was she ridiculous in finishing off these two back-to-back -back points for her squad. In giving Western Illinois a massive start in this one, they would end up winning the first set 25-14. to They punctuated it with a little Elizabeth Ziegler here and a little Brittany Wolf as well. So you thought, great start for Illinois First, great start for Western Illinois against Illinois Chicago, but the next three sets all in favor of the Flames. So a rough one and two weekend at home for Western Illinois, but still plenty of promise being shown by that emerging volleyball squad. We'll continue to keep you updated on their progress throughout the season. Not a great day for John Wood men's soccer either with a rough road loss today at North Iowa area. The Blazers are back in action coming up on Monday at home at 4 o'clock. So a lot of potential simmering there. We'll see how that all shakes down as well. And we'll have more Overtime coming your way straight after this. You're watching KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar, working for you. Well, this has been an insanely busy week, but the fun never ends here at KHQA Sports. My man Ben Schmidt is here with you tomorrow. He's got a great postmortem wrap-up on what Southeastern was able to do on its own court this week and really giving itself its first test, really its first huge test, in fact, with a now fully healthy Amanda Stevens back. But there's so much more to the Sun story than just that. Again, Ben Schmidt will have that for you tomorrow. By the way, I'm on assignment tomorrow as well, making my annual pilgrimage down to St. Louis for the bronze boot game. Yes, indeed, a chance to check in and have an audience once again with former Q&D soccer stars Tanner and Seth Anders as their nationally ranked Billiken squad takes on SIUE 
That's uh, Southern Illinois Edwardsville. So obviously should be fun stuff. I'm bringing that back for next week so we can do that kind of wrap up for you then as well. All kinds of fun heading your way this week. Big football games ahead. Obviously some great competition softball wise, including a big showdown Monday between Highland and Monroe City. So all kinds of stuff building into a huge football weekend next weekend where the biggie, of course, is Monroe City South Shelby, but plenty more than just that. I can't wait. Hope you'll join us here next Saturday. We've got cross country next week, college football for you, high school football and more. That's why we do 30 minutes because five minutes just isn't enough. So we'll see you right back here next Saturday for overtime.